But Chiari is a syndrome in which global or segmental hepatic venous outflow obstruction causes because of uh, IVC obstruction. If the IVC obstruct due to any reason, it could be membrane, congenital membrane, or uh, because of thrombus, or by occlusion of the major hepatic vein branches. So this would be termed as but Chiari syndrome. So it means there will be thrombus either in the IVC or the major hepatic vein branches. So this would be termed as but Chiari syndrome. But Chiari is classified into three types. Type 1 when the IVC is occluded. There may likely be hepatic veins plus or minus. Sometimes there will be hepatic veins involvement or sometimes there may not be involvement. So this would be called as type 1 uh, but Chiari syndrome. In type 2 but Chiari syndrome what happens major hepatic veins becomes occluded and sometimes there may be IVC involved or may not be IVC in involved that would be considered as type 2 but Chiari uh, syndrome. In type 3 but Chiari syndrome only centrilobular or small centrilobular uh, veins would be occupied would be occluded by the thrombus so this would be termed as type 3 but Chiari syndrome. Apart from the thrombosis, but Chiari syndrome could also be caused by IVC congenital membranes or congenital web. It is also associated with oral contraceptive or if there is pregnancy, so in pregnancy this likely to happen. In coagulopathy, so this is one important, in coagulopathy like polycythemia, thrombotic, thrombocytopenic purpura or sickle cell anemia may lead to but Chiari syndrome. It may likely be uh, due to tumor induced hepatic vein compression. Hepatic vein trauma or uh, after post surgery, this complication may develop and give rise to but Chiari syndrome. In constrictive pericarditis, there is also a chance of developing but Chiari syndrome. In right heart failure, but Chiari syndrome may also be occur. So whenever there is but Chiari syndrome, you have to look for the other causes as well beside the main cause is IVC thrombus or main hepatic veins thrombosis either in the major, major veins or in the small veins whatever the cause may be you have to look for all these differentials. Clinical presentation of the Bartchiari syndrome can be divided into two. Uh, it could be acute and could be chronic. In acute hepatic vein obstruction, that is the main. If there is acute form of Bartchiari syndrome, there will be acute hepatic vein obstruction. And this will cause hepatomegaly. The liver would be enlarged. There will also be, there would also be abdominal pain associated with ascites. So this will happen when the case is in acute form. In the chronic form, the presentation would be a slight different. Chronic type of Bartchiari syndrome uh, may be due to certain insidious uh, presentations like it will include feature of secondary portal hypertension. There will be secondary portal hypertension. This will be because of Bartchiari syndrome and there will also be jaundice. So these two types of a presentation would be there patient will give either acute presentation having enlarged fat in enlarged liver and pain and ascites and beside this there might be portal secondary portal hypertension uh, portal veins would be dilated splenic vein would be dilated beside there will be jaundice as well the level of the bilirubin would be high so you need to do uh, basic radiological investigations for the diagnosis that could be ultrasound, CT scan and also certain uh, scintigraphic examination. So let's start watching these ultrasound imaging how this Bartchiari syndrome will look like on the ultrasound imaging.
In Bhatkiari syndrome, ultrasound play vital role because it can easily pick IVC thrombosis and also it can appreciate major hepatic vein thrombosis and its non-visualization. Look for these images. There are four images on the upper right uh, image. You can appreciate thrombus within the hepatic vein. So uh, it is clearly visible and there is no blood flow in the major hepatic vein. On the left hand upper uh, top upper image shows a slightly non-visualization of the right hepatic and middle hepatic vein uh, because of the thrombus. So these white arrows indicating there is thrombus within the veins. In the lower right image multiple uh, white arrows indicating there are collaterals and also presence of uh, um, thrombosis in the hepatic veins. So this is but Chiari syndrome. Uh, look for the uh, uh, left sided lower image again you can appreciate thrombus occupying the right hepatic vein so on the ultrasound image it is quite easy to pick the thrombus within these vein within the ivc and also within the hepatic veins or even smaller centri lobar veins can also be uh, appreciated if there would have any thrombus you can also pick on the ultrasound imaging clearly this is another transabdominal scan and on this trans transabdominal scan uh, look for the right hepatic vein. Right hepatic vein shows an ecogenic thrombus which is indicated by the white arrow and the peripheral part of the right hepatic vein is not visible because it is obscure and is poorly visualized. As far as the middle hepatic vein is concerned look for it's just visible because of the thrombus. Thrombus is only visible while the peripheral part of the middle hepatic vein is non-visualized, is poorly visualized. Rest of the uh, hepatic veins are not visualized. So that is the uh, case of uh, uh, Bhatkiari syndrome on the ultrasound imaging. This is another example of Bhatkiari syndrome. This is transabdominal scan and on this transabdominal scan you can appreciate tortuously dilated hepatic vein with filling of thrombus. So, uh, in this way you can pick the point you can appreciate the thrombus within the major or even in smaller hepatic uh, veins this is quite easy to pick on the doppler uh, on this plane ultrasound and also if there would have any suspicion you can put the doppler signal to visualize whether there is flow or not mind you that in Bhatkiari syndrome there would be uh, uh, changes pattern on the uh, Doppler ultrasound and on the Doppler signal. So let's start watching these Doppler signals to appreciate that how it will appear on the Doppler imaging. Look for these Doppler images. There are two Doppler images has been given for your for, for your understanding. On the right side, A indicating by A, it shows normal hepatic waveform. So you can appreciate the normal hepatic waveform. While on the left side, you can appreciate a damped hepatic venous vein form, although it's non-specific because in certain other cases, you uh, will see also these uh, damped wave form, but uh, to some extent, there is certain differential. So within quite these few differentials, you can narrow down your differential and ultimately you reach to the conclusions of Bhatkiari syndrome. So this is what the example of Bhatkiari syndrome on Doppler imaging. This is another example of the Doppler signals. On this Doppler signal indicated by the white arrow, a continuous reversal of flow within the main hepatic vein can be seen. So this is what the reversal of flow, you can change, uh, you can see the changes of the color. It shows the reversal of the flow. So this is the second uh, uh, important findings on the Doppler imaging. The one, it was damped hepatic venous waveform and the second one is there will be a continuous reversal of flow within the main hepatic vein which you can appreciate on this image and quite clearly visible on this image. Uh, this is axial image of the CT and on this CT you can appreciate that the quadrate lobe is uh, preserved. Uh, with a normal attenuation and enhancement pattern as far as peripheral liver is concerned it shows patchy enhancement because of dilated channels uh, the one important thing is here you can appreciate the thrombus so this is hepatic vein thrombosis 
and uh, to certain extent there is also collateral formation can also be seen however uh, in certain areas hepatic veins are difficult to visualize so this is what the ct image and on the ct image you can appreciate to certain extent uh, presence of the thrombus in major veins on this ultrasound image you can appreciate enlarged liver with the heterogeneous enhancement pattern beside this there is ascites also present it means this is an acute stage of Bertchiari syndrome in acute stage of Bertchiari syndrome there will be hepatomegaly uh, there will also be ascites and there will be thrombus as well so these uh, all information you can get on this CT axial image as far as the hepatic veins are concerned it is not clearly visualized uh, because of the thrombus so whenever there is thrombus it will show just a hypodensity on the liver so you will appreciate this hypodensity it means that there is hepatic thrombosis another ct axial uh, image you can appreciate here that the liver is enlarged liver is congested and a liver shows abnormal hypodensity irregularly tortuously dilated uh, intravasculature because of the thrombosis so this is uh, how the image will look like on the CT so this is another case of Bertchiari syndrome and if you see this image so definitely you won't miss this and this is the acute to uh, chronic form of the Bertchiari syndrome so images will appear in this fashion and it is quite easy to pick on the either non-contrast enhanced CT or contrast enhanced CT you will be able to pick the thrombosis scintigraphy also play an vital role a sulfur collide scanning will show normal or increased activity to only caudate lobe because caudate lobe will be preserved however there will be reduced activity in the remaining part of the liver so when you do sulfur collide scanning you will see that there will be either normal activity or there might be increased activity in the caudate lobe of the liver while there will be overall reduced activity in the remaining part of the liver on the dsa scan the venographic appearance are characteristic uh, resembling a spider web so this is what another characteristic appearance on the dsa especially on the venography there will be it will look like a spider web angiography and venography can also be performed to observe thrombus in any part of the vein in any part of the body rather i would say but especially when there is a chance of bed carry you have to particularly look for the portal veins and ivc hepatic venography and uh, superior mesenteric arterial venography will show it would be occluded here on this image you can appreciate with narrow hepatic veins so there is there are narrow hepatic vein spider web pattern of venous collateral however it is not visible here i am going to show it to the next slide so far so far the wedge hepatic venous ivc gradient it's concerned it would be more than 10 millimeter hydrogadium so uh, here the main point is to discuss is that is spider web pattern of venous collateral because of the thrombosis there will be development of venous collateral which will appear as a spider web so let's look for the spider web in these next images this is what the venography is and here this is a characteristic feature which is called a spider web and spider webs develops when there is main ivc or major hepatic vein is occluded by the thrombus so as a result the collateral develops and uh, when you inject the dye contrast contrast will look like as there is spider web in the area of uh, interest or maybe at the porta hepatis or any particular around the major hepatic veins or around the ivc here on this image you can appreciate a well-defined uh, small narrow spider web collaterals which has been opacified and the image will card as a spider web appearance this is another example here you can appreciate a very classic example of spider web appearance because of development of the collateral in the behind image you can appreciate vertebras and this is the area where liver uh, is situated and in the liver you can see catheter is inserted and in contrast injected 
after the contrast this film has been taken uh, and because of uh, this appearance it look like spider web which is indicating that uh, collateral has been developed so this is a case of but chiari syndrome for the diagnostic purpose a core needle biopsy is frequently required to exclude tumor because but chiari syndrome may uh, look like or may mimic as a tumor so core needle biopsy will confirm the presence of central venous congestion and venous thrombi so therefore only the tool to confirm the but chiari syndrome is to do the core needle biopsy and confirm there is any thrombus or there is any venous congestion So far the but chiari treatment is concerned the first important treatment is liver transplantation if there is great damage to the liver and uh, liver has got a uh, mean abnormal changes or congested liver or its parenchyma is badly affected so the only way to reverse that uh, abnormality is to do the liver transplantation so the first important tool is to do the liver transplantation the second is there are multiple interventional techniques uh, available to uh, to correct the but chiari syndrome and these uh, interventional techniques include venous uh, membranotomy like if there is any membrane so you have to take the membrane out surgically so that procedure would be called as venous membranotomy or venous angioplasty if there is a thrombus and in there is great blockage so by putting a certain balloon in the uh, venous uh, lumen so that procedure would be called as venous angioplasty or eventually venous stenting so you may put the stent in the vein to uh, open it and so this will allow blood to the liver parenchyma and can correct to some extent but chiari syndrome